What's going on? This is Josh, and I'm doing this little tutorial per request on the Headrush Looper Board Facebook group. Um, this is just a really quick and dirty rundown of how I'm using the Launch Control XL to control some of the functions on the Looper Board. So uh, I'm just going to throw together a little quick and dirty loop. Here we go. Enough of that. I'm gonna hop on over to the computer and um, we'll go on the Launch Control XL editor and I'll show you how I have this all set up. All right, so here we are over in the Launch Control XL editor. I have my Launch Control XL plugged in via USB cable and this screen doesn't look like much yet. What you need to do, you'll want to load from the device whichever user template that you plan on using. Um, this has up to eight user templates, so you could really go crazy with this thing. Uh, I'm currently only using one template. Um, I'm using template one, so we're gonna go mess around in user template three. You can use whichever one you'd like, just because we're gonna start from scratch here. So template received, that means we're pretty much synced up here and still doesn't look like much. You need to show values. Now you, these are all the values that these knobs, uh, sliders and buttons are currently controlling. So 
to figure out what we need to do to control your head rush looper board, we need to hop over to the manual. I highly recommend any new piece of gear you get, go ahead and download the PDF manual, create a folder in your Google Drive or whatever storage you use, and have a folder for all your manuals. The PDFs are, are really nice to have, I'll admit. I hardly ever sit there and read through manuals, but I do use the, the search function quite often to get exactly what I need to know from the manual. You'll be looking at page 37 and 38 for the MIDI implementation on this. And this is where the looper board is a little bit quirky. Um, as you can see right here, foot switch actions, which is what we're going to be looking at first, are all controlled by CC3. And that data range is between 0 and 60, which means any button we assign for our foot switch actions is going to be CC3, and it's going to have some specific data number between 0 and 60. So to get the numbers we need for what we want to do, we need to go to the next page. These are all the MIDI foot switch actions. And we are going to do track 1 through 4, record, overdub, and play, which you can see right here in this column are data range numbers 11 through 14. So hop over here and kind of show what that what exactly that means. We're going to, I'm going to hide this for a second. We're going to map these four buttons to our our start play overdub and let's go back here to show these values if you click on you, you highlight any of these you can see that this area here is showing us what's currently assigned we know automatically we're going to be using all 16 of these buttons for our foot switch actions those are all cc number three so i'm going to go ahead and just change all these to cc3 stay nice and organized And this way, I don't forget to do it later. Okay, these are going to have a default MIDI channel assigned to them. So as we go through these, um, we're going to want to just change these to whatever MIDI channel you prefer to use. Uh, I'm only using currently one MIDI controller for the looper board. And I'm just going to put all my MIDI channels to channel 1. You can set the looper board to receive whatever MIDI channel you prefer to use. I think I have mine set to Omni, so that will just receive any. So again, these four buttons here are 11 through 14. So this is this is the part that kind of confuses uh, confused me at first. Put both the minimum and maximum value to that data range that you're going to use. So we know our first switch was 11, so we're going to set those both to 11. You'll want all these to toggle. Um, I tried momentary, it, it doesn't work. So these all need to be to toggle. So we'll go through here. That one to 12. MIDI channel 1. 13. MIDI channel 1. 14. Sorry about the phone call. Okay, I believe I forgot to change the MIDI channel on this one. We'll change that to one. So these are mapped. So let's go ahead and map our stop buttons. So we'll go over here to stop, which is seven through eight. It's the same concept. So we go here, and this will be seven, seven respectively. Then this one will be eight. MIDI channel 1, 9, and then MIDI channel 1, 1. and 10. So we have 7, 8, 9, and 10. Let's just make sure that's right, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, so what else What else might we want to map here? Th this could be, I mean, this is going to be up to you. What I did, I, okay, so what I did, if I recall, I put my clears here. So, and what's really nice about this, which I, I didn't really demonstrate in the video before, was these clears are instantaneous. 
so there's no holding there's no there's no waiting you just you press these and your loop is clear which is really nice to do in a live situation uh, your song is over you want to start with a clean slate bam 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 i mean you clear these out instantaneously so let's look over here track clear is 49 through 52 we'll go ahead and i'm going to set all these midi channels here to one and now i forgot the numbers clear 49 through 52 so <coughs> What I like to do when I get kind of this far into the mapping is go ahead and save this. Uh, and you can either save this to a backup file, which is, I, I recommend that. But right now we're just going to save it to the device, which will send that over to where I'm um, in user, user bank three. So it's going to, we're going to send it over there, overwrite user template three. Okay. So if we were to go plug that device in, to the looper board right now everything we've mapped so far would would work so let's think about i'm not going to go through all of these these buttons i'm not going to go through all of these uh, because this is going to be specific to what you want to do i'll just tell you really quick what i did is i mapped um i mapped reverse to these four I, I like to have that option if I if I want to reverse something I, I like it I like doing that kind of thing so uh, another one that would be really good there is peel which I might switch over to that because I probably use that more often it, it's really nice to be able to peel that last layer off of your loop um, so if you do that, let's say you did peel there, you would just do 53 through 56. So I think by now you probably get the gist of how that works. Uh, let's look at some other things I mapped. These buttons I found to be to be really useful. Um, let's do this one. I mapped my start stop all to this button. So if we go here, that's data zero. So go over here. Want to make sure that's CC3 again, channel one, and then we just set our data range to zero, and that's going to be our start stop all. Um, let's see, the other one I set up, I set up all tracks fade, which is number 34, and to me that's super convenient. Um, just to have that all tracks fade if you want to fade your song out at the end. Again, you'll want to make sure these are on toggle. So that's set up. Uh, I'm going to leave these up to, to your interpretation. I did the tap tempo up here because I, I really like to tap it out by hand. I, I feel like you can get a little bit more accurate. Honestly, I can't remember. Let's look over here. I know I did a fourth thing there. Yep, the other thing I did was I did a, uh, a toggle on my microphone effects. So... I can just I can just get a clean dry mic signal for in between songs if you're talking to your crowd you don't want a bunch of reverb and echo on your voice so I map that I put a, a data note number four on this one here the other thing I did which this is going to be really specific to what you want to do I went and I did a load previous loop and load next loop. So that's 65 and 66 on these buttons here. And the way I did that, uh, jump back over here, it was 65 and 66. So I've got 65 on this one and then 66 on this one. And that's pretty handy uh, as you're going through your set. If you have some saved loops in there, saved templates, you can you can easily go through those without going through you know two or three four button presses on the pedal itself. Uh, we'll go through these real quick. I mapped these to my track volumes, so this is where we get up to 
the first page, page 37. Uh, track volumes here. This data range is going to be, what well, we'll, you'll see it when we hop back over there, but we've got CC numbers are going to change on these. We've got 14 through 21. So we just hop over here. This is going to be a default data range of zero between uh, between zero and 127. So there's nothing we need to do. Um, and I already this is how this is how bad my memory is. I already forgot that number. Um, 14 through 21. So these are super easy to set up. Whoops. So 14 through 21. 14, 15, it must jump 20 and 21. Okay. So once again, as we're going along, it's always a good idea to save. These here are going to be the same concept, and I, there's a lot of knobs here that I haven't mapped yet. Um, hoping Headrush unlocks some more of the uh, MIDI mapping for the effects, because that we really need that uh, for a live performance tool that would really unlock this machine. What I did with these, I did, a, I did the master volume, so if we hop over here, master level is CC number 7. I did my phone's level, CC9, whoops, and then the last thing I did was my, my click uh, track level, which is uh, CC28. I found that to be really useful to have that uh, click track level adjustable as, uh, as things go on, things get louder, things get quieter. Sometimes you need a little bit more click in your ear, sometimes it, you need less, so... Again, that was 28. So you just save that and that's ready to go. We're going to hop over to my template because I would like to map my input levels to these four uh, faders. So you go to load. I'm going to load from template one. Now we're in my template. I don't have anything really going on yet on these faders, so let's look at our input volumes. Wait a minute. You cannot map your input levels. What? Okay. Am I, am I wrong about this? Interesting. I thought for sure that would be something you could map. Um, let's see. Hopefully that's something that Headrush can add in an update. That would be pretty useful to be able to, um, to map those. I could even see if we're limited by these numbers, we'd have to, I could probably get rid of, personally, I could get rid of pans on the inputs. I, I feel as though that would be something you would set beforehand. You don't really need to have hands-on control of those pans. Um, but that's that's just my opinion. Um, yeah, interesting. I wasn't aware of that. So, anyway, I think uh, this has probably gone on long enough. I hope that helps you guys. Uh, let me know if you have any more questions in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.